This Relay computer is my very first homebrew computer project. And I've had so much fun along the way that I know now it's not going to be my last. And aside from seeing it running, which is awesome, I think that what keeps me motivated is also the ability to experiment and make changes along the way. And these design changes ranged from simple things like this capturing of the carry flag on a shift left operation, right through to an audio program loader built completely out of relays. Now, I've started the rather tedious process of reverse engineering the front panel functions microcode. But while I'm at it, I want to now experiment with taking the binary output and converting it to something a little more user friendly. This is a seven segment display, which contains seven LEDs that make up the digit, plus an additional LED for a decimal point. And if we roll it over, we can see 10 pins that correspond to the eight LEDs, plus two for the common cathodes. Now, I've fried my fair share of LEDs in my time, so the first thing on my to-do list was to create this breakout board to park it on. The common cathode on the bottom is tied to the ground, and then these jumpers tie seven of the anodes to these resistors. So I'll grab a jumper, and as I apply power through each resistor, we can see the corresponding segment light up. And just for fun, we can use a few jumpers to apply power across multiple segments to form a digit. We find seven segment displays everywhere, and most commonly, they are used to display the decimal digits of zero through nine. But using a mix of upper and lower case, they're also able to form all of the characters needed to display hexadecimal values. So to choose between the two, let's first take a look at what it takes to decode the binary to decimal. This method of converting binary numbers to binary coded decimal is known as double dabble, which I'll try to explain here. Since an 8-bit binary number can be as high as 255 decimal, we'll need these columns to capture the hundreds, tens, and ones values. And we start by putting our initial binary value on the top right. This algorithm starts by shifting the binary value to the left, with the leftmost bits being carried to the next column. And this shifting is repeated until the value of any column is 5 or greater. And if that happens, then 3 is added to that column's value before the shifting process continues. And at this point, the 10s and 1s values are both 5 or greater, so 3 is added to both columns. And then finally, once all of the input value bits have been shifted, the final values in the hundreds, tens, and ones columns can be decoded into their decimal equivalent. Now this method requires some hardware microcode that would be able to perform all of these shifts while at the same time comparing values in each column and performing addition. We would also need to decode the three separate binary coded decimal values to a decimal format. Now let's compare this to generating the same value in hexadecimal. Since hexadecimal is base 16, every group of four bits corresponds to a single hexadecimal digit. And in this case, each of these groups translates into a value of 10, or A in hexadecimal. And these are simply combined to make a total value of AA. And now, it's just a matter of finding a way to decode each group of four bits that will then activate the hexadecimal value on our seven-segment display. We've actually built this sort of decoder before for the ALU card, which takes a three-digit binary number and converts it to one of these eight outputs. 
And instead of a schematic, I'll use this diagram to better visualize how the ALU decoder works. If the three inputs are all zero, it will default to the no operation function, whereas a value of 0, 1, 1 activates the AND function. And if the three inputs are ones, then it's the shift left function that's activated. And the cool thing is that we can simply expand this by adding an additional column of relays. So we will now end up with four inputs and 16 outputs. So now if we have an input of 0101, which is five in hexadecimal, we see that the fifth output is activated and a 1010 correctly activates the 10th or A output. And then finally, an input of all ones activates the F output. Here's the completed 4 to 16 decoder, and I've added these four buttons and LEDs as the inputs. And then on the right side, I'm using these two bar graphs to display the output, and I'll overlay a close-up of that. Right now, since we have an input of all zeros, we can see that the zero output is active. But if I enter a binary value of one, we now see the second output is active and a binary input of one zero activates the third output. And then as I continue to increment the four bit binary inputs, we can see that each combination is activating the corresponding output line. So now that the decoder is decoding, we now need to have each of these 16 outputs drive combinations of inputs on the display. Our new decoder will activate one output that corresponds to each hexadecimal digit. And using that one output, we'll need a way to then activate only those LED segments needed to display that digit. And one way to do this is by using a dedicated grouping of diodes for each output line that activates the correct segments on the display. So I'll start by clipping the leads on a few dozen diodes and then get to work installing these along with some jumpers to create the patterns needed for the first few digits. I have the diodes for digits 0, 1, 2, and 3 installed, and these are all tied to the corresponding segments on the display. And with these first few done, we can now see how the decoder output lines would be able to activate these digits. On my weekly post on Patreon, I wrote about this project and how I might be able to save some diodes by reusing existing digits. And for example, if we look at the number eight, it would normally require seven diodes for seven segments. But if we take a look at the number zero, it already has most of the segments we need. And then to make an eight, we would just need this one segment. 
So if I place a jumper from 8 to drive the 0 at the same time, we get all of the segments for an 8 displayed, which seems pretty cool, but things aren't always that easy. And if I activate the 0 line again, we now see an 8 because this jumper is backfeeding to the middle segment. Now, one fix for this is to add a diode to prevent the zero from backfeeding to the eight. And with that in place, we can see that the zero is displaying properly again. And if I now activate the eight, we still get the correct digit displayed as well. So I think the exercise of trying to optimize the circuit was fun, but it would definitely increase the overall complexity. And besides, I also kind of like the visual simplicity of the layout right now, and it definitely makes it easier to debug as I'm building this prototype. I got to the point where I was running out of these smaller jumpers, so I had to go into jumper manufacturing mode, which slowed the build up a bit, but overall, I think these turned out pretty good. But what I still need to figure out is how to tie everything to here, because on a breadboard, I'd only have the four connections available for each segment. So to keep things tidy, I'm going to leverage the power rails that run horizontally across the entire board. And since they're removable, I can connect a few of them together, and then connect each of the segment inputs to a corresponding rail which then provides a clean way to connect our mini diode outputs to the required segments for each digit. All right, it is 3.07 a.m. And I may have gotten a little carried away with this one, but it was a lot of fun. And I really just wanted to see it decoding the four bits 
into a hex value, which looks like it's working just fine. And I just need to now duplicate this circuit to decode a full byte. And you can see right behind me here that I now have it hooked up to the Arduino knockoff in a relay module. And I'm just gonna put it through some paces and really exercise those relays and diodes and make sure that there's no gremlins left in there. So I'm going to end off with some of that footage and I'm gonna hit the hay. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.